What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and as some of you might have seen, I had the opportunity to get some hands-on PvP experience in an early test of Ready or Not, and in this video I want to talk a little bit about what I took away from that experience. First off, I want to highlight that the footage in the background is from an alpha test build that was set up specifically for the play session I took part in. It was PvP only, with a limited number of players, and it was one of the first times that the servers were being tested out. Unsurprisingly, there were some stability issues and bugs to deal with, which made the gameplay a little… stop and go, and the servers were not always fully populated for each match. Additionally, we were playing on North American servers, which I feel may have affected the experience of Europe-based players. But all of those caveats aside, I think the playtest was valuable in giving an insight into what Ready or Not is shaping up to be, so let's take a bit of a closer look at some of the features that this game has in store for us. One of my favourite features even in this early build of the game is the detailed customizability you have for your character, and that's the first thing I want to discuss in a bit of detail. The customization goes so far that you're not just making loadout choices, but really almost creating character builds where your setup of primary and secondary tactical devices, grenades, protective gear, primary and secondary weapons can all come together to give you a very specific role with very specific strengths and weaknesses. As your primary weapons, you can choose between four different categories – less lethal, rifles, shotguns and SMGs. The rifle, shotgun and SMG categories come with a decent selection of standard first-person shooter weapons that many players will recognise from other video games or films. I won't go into too much detail about the current selection of weapons in this video, but if you're interested in what is available, I will be listing the full loadout options in an article on Rogue9.com, so check it out there if you like. The more unique choice of weapons that we don't normally get to pick in other games are the less lethal options, and for the primaries you can choose between the 590A less lethal shotgun that will fire bean bags instead of slugs or pellets, or the pepperball gun, which is essentially a paint ball marker but loaded with special balls that contain an irritating powder. Shooting your opponents with either of these weapons will not harm their health, but instead will force them to let go of their weapon and raise their hands for a few seconds. In the story and co-op mode, this will of course allow you to pacify and arrest your targets instead of killing them, and the mechanic will work similarly in multiplayer. Getting hit with any less lethal weapon, we'll see a few more later on, will have varying effects on the enemy player in terms of their vision, hearing and their mobility, and of course they will not be able to fight because their gun is lowered. Then, either you or a teammate can use plastic cuffs to arrest the opponent, which essentially takes them out of the match for the time being. The game mode we got to try out was King of the Hill, with a single capture point and the win going to the team that managed to fill up the control meter. This is a pretty standard mode that many other games have done before, but the unique twist in Ready or Not is that if you manage to arrest the entire enemy team, then the match is won immediately. It's a bit like the Golden Snitch in Quidditch. It offers an alternative way to end the match early, but I guess the difference is that Ready or Not is somewhat less violent and dangerous. One last thing to note about the primary weapons in the game is that many of them can be customised in quite a granular way. You can choose from different muzzle attachments, side rail mounted lasers and lights, a variety of grips, loads of different sight options, different ammo types and even how many magazines you want to bring. For a pre-beta build, this is already pretty neat. On the sidearm front, you again have a choice between lethal and less lethal options in the form of six different pistols or a taser stun gun, which will allow you to incapacitate and control enemies at a relatively short range. The pistols can often also be customised to a high degree with different laser or light attachments, muzzle devices or suppressors, optical sights, different ammo types and the number of magazines you want to bring, or even custom ergonomic designs. Next you can equip your character with up to 4 tactical devices and 4 grenades and a separate primary tactical device. For your tactical devices you can choose between door wedges, C2 explosive charges and cans of pepper spray. The pepper spray's in-game function is similar to the taser. It is a short range incapacitating device that will allow you to perform arrests. The C2 and wedges were specifically for use on doors and since the training map we played on in this test did not have any doors, 
stores. I can't comment on how exactly these items will work, but I assume that one will help secure doors while the other one will help open them. In addition to these tactical items you choose, you will always have med kits, a tablet, and a multi-tool available. As primary tacticals, there is the mirror gun, a long wand with a camera on one end and a screen on the other. I did not manage to get this item to function during the test and I think that maybe you once again need a door to use it properly. The next is a breaching shotgun. Again, I didn't get to test this, but I think in this case the functionality is pretty self-explanatory. And finally, you can also bring the M320 40mm grenade launcher, loaded up with tear gas grenades, and in this specific early access build of the game, gas is an extremely powerful tool. Out of all of the different helmet and face gear choices, there is only one gas mask and with all of the different choices on offer, many players were using other equipment. If you put on a mask and load it up on gas grenades, then all you had to do was gas out an entire floor of the target building before walking in and shooting or arresting everyone. Easy win. And as fun as that could be, I see this as a bit of a risk for balanced gameplay in future. Gas is so useful that it becomes a huge risk for you to play without the mask, and so you end up with a must-pick piece of headgear. The consequence of this is that a lot of the other cool choices will almost never be played in serious multiplayer matches, and if it comes to that, I would consider it a bit of a shame really. But that's an issue for the devs to figure out, and hopefully they can find a good balance. Grenades that were available during this alpha test came in four different flavors. Stinger grenades, less lethal hand grenades that fire out rubber pellets, CS gas, nine bangers, you guessed it, stun grenades that bang nine times, and flashbangs, you know, the ones that flash and go bang. All four options are non-lethal, and if you consider the SWAT versus criminal scenario that the game is based on, that makes perfect sense. And finally, last but not least, you will also get to choose between light and heavy body armor and various forms of headgear as mentioned earlier. With armor, the trade-off is simple. With heavy armor, you can tank more bullets but move more slowly, or you can choose to go lighter and gain some maneuverability in exchange for less protection. With the headgear, you get six different choices, well, seven if you count none as a choice as well. But apart from that, there are night vision goggles, a gas mask, anti-flash goggles, shooting glasses, a ballistic face mask, and the somewhat mysterious up armoring. At this stage, the exact function of each choice is not always fully clear since the game did not provide any details and I didn't have enough time to test each one. Some of course are pretty clear. Night vision lets you see in the dark and everything turns that cool green color, plus you can see infrared lasers. The CRBN mask protects you against gas and probably also pepper balls and pepper spray. I would assume that the anti-flash goggles provide some limited protection against flashbangs and the ballistic mask gives you some protection against low velocity bullets. But as for the other stuff, the exact benefits are still a little unclear to me. But nevertheless, I think that all in all, I've managed to make my point. Even in this early build, the loadout options look really nicely diversified and I look forward to getting to dig into the specifics of all of the equipment more in future. Combine this attention to detail with the unique ability to use non-lethal methods in PvP and you have a nice recipe for a gaming experience unlike any we've seen in any other PvP military or police style shooters. Being able to bring tactical devices such as the mirror gun and having pickups on the map like ballistic shields and assault ladders further add to the tactical potential of the game. That being said, there are also still a few question marks for me. I've already mentioned balancing in relation to the headgear but that also extends to the weapons. There are clearly some guns that are better than others with far more customizability options or better recoil control or fire rate. What would ever make me choose a less capable gun if there are just straight up better choices available? Maybe the game will manage this via a cost system that games like CSGO, Insurgency Sandstorm or Valorant use. Maybe it will be managed in a different way. I guess we'll have to wait and see. 
Personally, I also feel that the recoil of weapons was a little bit strong in this alpha. Firing almost any gun came with so much recoil that aimed bursts were pretty much impossible and even single fire was hard to control. Additionally, the muzzle flashes and bounce meant that after the first shot, you're almost guaranteed to lose your sight picture, which can make things a little challenging when you're playing against other people. And to be fair, for some of the guns, this makes perfect sense. Shooting full bore rifles like the G3, FAL, or M14 will be very challenging to control, especially full auto. But other guns like the AK 102 should definitely not be that hard to handle. The recoil in this build was more than I would expect in real life and definitely more than I would expect in a PvP mode of a video game. The option to arrest opponents is definitely unique and interesting, but again, balancing this mechanic for PvP could be tricky. The successful arrest needs to be valuable enough to justify the risk of trying to capture an opponent rather than just killing them, but on the other hand, there needs to be some form of counterplay once you've been arrested, because just being stuck there waiting to be rescued could get pretty boring after a while. The way this was handled in the alpha was that after some time, arrested players were able to run away to rejoin their teammates who can then cut them loose. This definitely helps with the problem of getting bored while handcuffed, but it was probably a bit too powerful because it was almost impossible to keep hold of captured opponents. So in terms of the multiplayer, there's still some things to work out. But what I can say for sure right now is that I'm pretty excited in seeing what the PvE single player and co-op will bring. In a story mode, balancing isn't a problem. Who cares if the riot shield is overpowered? So what if the tear gas is super duper useful? And also, it doesn't matter if the arrested NPCs get bored while handcuffed. Nobody cares about their feelings. Screw you, virtual person. You should have thought about the consequences of your actions before choosing a virtual life of crime. My final conclusion is that I'm interested to see where the PvP multiplayer will go, but I cannot wait to see more of this story-based co-op. Ready or not could end up being the tactical, mission-based shooter that I've been missing in my life. Something like the old Rainbow Six games. I do hope that the team over at Void Interactive can pull it off, because the more quality games on the market, the better. What are your thoughts on the game so far? What are you looking forward to more, the PvP or PvE? Let me know in the comments section below and if you want to stay up to date with the latest news on Ready or Not, feel free to check out their official website or Twitter feed. And with that, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.